All right, this is the second part of the series that started with this really, really weird story about snowmen and fish eyes and the Sea of Fists and so on and so forth. Today, I hope to try to put it all together for you. What we're talking about here is something called sliding filament theory. And what sliding filament theory is, is the concept of how muscles actually contract on a molecular level. What's happening with the molecules inside of a muscle to make it work, okay? Now I need to harp on the word theory for just a minute because it's been misused for so long. People think, well, oh, it's just a theory. I, I really am bothered by that. And it's because there's so much stuff on TV that's like, I have a theory about why my car won't start. I have a theory about why you don't have a girlfriend, you know, things like that, okay? When you hear people say things like that, I want you in your head to say, you are a liar. Okay? You don't have a theory. You have a hypothesis. Okay? Folks, you are welcome to all the hypotheses you can make. And, and, and may you make hypotheses and test hypotheses for as long as you live. But keep your hands out of the theory jar. They don't belong there. Theories are backed by a huge body of evidence. Lots of scientists have done lots of research and have come to a, a, a common conclusion. And this is what it is. What we know about the natural universe, okay, uh, is based that, that all these things are made of particles and subatomic particles. It's all based on something called atomic what? Theory. Theory. Because theory is as good as it gets. Now, people think, well, if you graduate from a theory, you become a law. No. Completely separate entity altogether. You don't, become, you don't turn from this into one of those. So this is not, well, it's just a theory. No, it is a well-tested, well-supported hypothesis that graduated to theory so yeah that's a personal pet peeve so there's a two minute rant on theory okay now we're going to talk about these components that that i mentioned yesterday and i'm going to give you their real names okay first guy here the fish eyes that we were talking about is actually a protein and there's four different proteins that are in here which is why if you want to build muscle you have to eat lots of protein this fish eyes from our analogy yesterday is actually a protein called actin. Actin. And actin, the little dots or the, the pupil of the fish eye, is what's called a binding site. There is a binding site on here that the fist gets to bind to. So if you draw the little fish eyes there in your notes, write the word actin. A-C-T-I-N. Okay. Now, instead of drawing the whole sea of fists, I just drew one. And what it kind of looks like is, is sort of like a golf club, but a terribly drawn golf club. Yeah. Like a thin piece that's kind of wide at the end. That, that piece is known as myosin, but it doesn't exist by itself. Myosin exists in a combination or a giant bundle of other myosin molecules. And what kind of molecule is this again? Yeah, that's right. It's a protein. It's a protein. Again, when you work out, what you're doing is you're ripping apart these fibers, these filaments on a molecular level. And your body goes back in and repairs them stronger and builds more of them to build up, uh, to replace those. Okay. So those make up the two main filaments. What I've drawn up here is supposed to be a giant bundle of myosin altogether, okay? The next player here is the protector. What's the protector's name? What did we call him yesterday? Upside down. Upside down purple snowman. His name is really troponin. A lot of people don't know him very well, but his name is troponin. T-R-O-P-O-N-I-N. Troponin is the snowman. Troponin is another protein. Another protein that has to be uh, repaired and, and so on and so forth. What's that? T-R-O-P-O-N-I-N.
Tropinen. The next one, what, what's, what should we have next? We have snowmen. What are they holding on to? Magic Ooh, not yet. Not yet. Twizzlers. Twizzlers. The next thing is another protein. Is the Twizzler. And it's called tropomyosin. T-R-O-P-O-M-Y-O-S-I-N. Tropomyosin. And technically, it is sort of connected to the snowmen. Okay? So, they refer to it in this thing we're about to look at as the troponin tropomyosin complex. This is the other protein that's involved here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is one of these things that's not a molecule. Now, what do the snowmen love again? Cranberries. The cranberries in this case are that. Anybody know what that is? CA2. Oh, I skipped. I pay no attention to the ninja star. Uh, CA2 plus, which is a what? Calcium. Calcium ion. Okay. It's not a molecule by definition because it's an ion. It's only one atom rather than other atoms bound together uh, covalently. So magical cranberries, they are, that's the calcium ion. That's what activates this whole thing. You know, when people talk about calcium and the need for calcium in the body, they emphasize bones, and your bones absolutely need it. But folks, your muscles couldn't contract without calcium. It's, it's, it's just as essential to, to muscles as it is to bones. And finally, the throwing star. Now, what is the energy that powers all of this stuff? Energy that powers it is... In, yes, and that's what the throwing star represents. ATP. ATP... Does anybody remember what ATP stands for? Adenosine triphosphate. Heck yeah. Adenosine triphosphate. What it really looks like is basically a nucleotide where you've got a phosphate, ribose, sugar, and adenine, and then a couple more phosphates added to it. The importance to ATP in living things is that that's the currency. Everything gets exchanged for this. We eat chunks of cow meat. We eat, we eat celery. Uh, dots candy, you know. Some people eat boogers, okay? All of these, don't recommend it. All of these things get converted by our bodies into energy, okay? But we need a common uh, currency. All of these reactions that take place with enzymes and, and between different proteins and all the things that we need to catalyze, there's a certain amount of energy that has to go in. So everything gets converted into ATP energy. Okay. They get exchanged for ATP. Does anybody remember what cytoplasmic organelle, what organelle in the cell makes the energy? Mitochondria. mitochondria. Good. It's at the mitochondria that all the things that we eat, all these organic molecules, go in and are absorbed, and they get converted into usable energy in the form of ATP. Okay. Now, this is where it's going to get a little weird and wonky. I'm going to try to put my computer monitor up here. This is from the... Uh, illustrations and animations that came with the textbook years ago so you can see here's all the pieces trying to work together okay I'm gonna show you what the whole thing looks like at uh, at one time or I'm gonna attempt so to do anyway okay um, Okay, so this is what happens, folks. These things get released. Punch, move, ninja star, back, and then they go back in like that. Okay, that's how your muscles contract because what happens is these filaments are overlapping one another. And as, as your muscle contracts, they slide past one another like that. That's why it's called sliding filament theory, as they move past one another. But now this little guy moving the little tiny bit that he moved aw across this way is not going to make a, much of a muscle contraction. So what happens is this. On a greater scale, 
Many of them are doing this. You have a number of cross bridges that are working at the same time. I'll turn this up so you can you can hear the the blub, 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 blub. Oh, there's a little bit of John Mayer going on. See, these cross bridges are all going to fire a little bit at a time, and they're going to each move it to some degree forward. Okay. Now, on a greater scale, the reason that this we're, we're, the movement that we're talking about here, moving across like that, we're talking about nanometers in distance, billionths of a meter that we're moving forward. Each one of them may be trying to shove this a, a couple of nanometers. But when we get a bunch of these things together, and there's a bunch of these sarcomeres, these overlapping areas like this, in each muscle cell. Uh, so what happens then is they work together. And they work in sequence. One will start, and then another one goes, and then another one goes over and over again until that, that sarcomere or that section of muscle gets shorter. If you remember from your notes, I had you draw muscle, a muscle cell as a long tube, and it had all these stripes in it. This is the reason for the stripes. There are areas in your muscle that have more things that are overlapped, and so those are darker, and then areas where they don't overlap, and those are, those are lighter bands in the muscle. You can actually see this with the proper magnification under a microscope. You can see these, these light and dark bands therein. Okay, but what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to show you, actually just show you these things first, um, and then I'll have you write them down here at the end so I can make this go kind of quick. Okay, um, so write down six steps of the cross bridge cycle. Six steps of the cross bridge cycle. The cross bridge cycle takes us through the entire time of what happens as the muscle contracts in sliding filament theory. Okay, I'll give you a, a chance to write down the rest of this here in just a minute, but so the video doesn't drag on too long uh, online. I'll uh, I'll slow down. Uh, I'll uh, go through it quick here. So just write down the the bold things and leave some space. Leave you know, I leave uh, a line in your notes for each of these pieces here. Okay, so. Step one, exposure of binding sites on actin, and then leave five lines below that so you can write down what those steps actually mean. Exposure of binding sites on actin. And just to briefly explain it, action potential. Somebody asked me, what was the lightning that hit the castle? Was it ATP? No. In this case, it's not. What it was, was a nerve impulse. The nerve sends an electrical signal, which serves like lightning from the brain, saying, saying hey, muscle, it's time to contract now. And so that's the lightning that hits the castle to start this whole thing. Action potential brings about, that's, that's what that is. If action potential gets confusing, just write down the words, uh, write down nerve impulse, okay, because that's fine. Brings the release from calcium ions from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In other words, wah, 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 wah. Here's what I'm trying to drive at. Where have you heard something reticulum? Endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum. Guys, that's what this is. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is just the endoplasmic reticulum inside of a muscle cell. That's what this thing is. And that's where all the calcium ions are stored. Then all of a sudden, when they're released, they flood into the cytosol, which is the same thing as cytoplasm. So if you see that word, it's interchangeable. And they bind to troponin, which I told you was the what? And our analogy was the? Snowman. Snowman, yeah. Causing a change in the conformation of the troponin, troponin tropomyosin complex, which then reveals the binding sites on actin, or the pupils of the fish eyes are exposed. Okay. You get that just that bold stuff written? The second step, binding of myosin to actin. Okay? So that's what happens next. And I'll click on this cross bridge and leave yourself two spaces then after that. Myosin binds to actin. Now they show this one glowing like a yellow color right here. It's glowing, and the reason they show it to be glowing is because um, it it represents that there's a high amount of energy there. Okay, that there's a lot of energy involved in it. All right, after the fist punch punches, what does it do then? 
It sticks in and then does what? Rolls forward. Rolls forward. And that's the next step. And that's probably, you know, if, if we were to name it, it's one of the most important steps here because without this next step, there is no movement. Oh, that's the same one. Hang on. And that thing's called the power stroke. Now you leave yourself six spaces after that there. Power stroke. Binding of myosin to actin brings in the change of conformation. Conformation in this case means we're changing the shape of this protein. Okay, Proteins look like they do and function the way that they do because of their shape. Now their shape is determined by the sequence of amino acids that go in. Their shape, uh, their, the sequence determines how it will fold up, and that fold determines what it's going to do. Okay, the binding of myosin brings out a change in the shape of the cross bridge, and releases ADP. Okay, so here's it's a little bit anticlimactic when I click on this. It doesn't move very far. Okay, but it does move. All right, so six spaces, and then we're moving on to the next one. What's got to happen next, folks? How do we get this thing out of here? Ninja, star. Ninja stars, which represent ATP. So we're going to disconnect the cross bridge with ATP. So as soon as ATP binds, that cross bridge will get disconnected. So step four is disconnecting the cross bridge from actin. Leave yourself two spaces after that. Ready? After step four, not only does it disconnect, but that ninja star has the power to push this thing back down into the sea of fists, which re energizes the cross bridge. But in order to release its energy, ATP has to break apart. The TP stands for what? Triphosphate. Triphosphate. When it breaks apart, it's no longer ATP, it's what? ADP, mm -hmm. which stands for as adenosine diphosphate. And it releases the energy, and then it shows you that it's glowing here, which is to represent, okay, that there's energy that has gone back into this uh, cross bridge here. Re-energizing and repositioning of the cross bridge. And then the last step is we have to send the cranberries or calcium ions back home. So we're going to remove the calcium ions. Click on those and they go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, Removal of calcium ions. And this is done via ion pumps. In other words, we're moving these things against the concentration gradient. There's already a ton of uh, calcium ions in here, but we're having to push more in there. And so we use energy to do that. And something you talked about in biology called active transport. It's active transport that pushes these back into the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So one more time, let me show you what this looks like. Uh, as one cross bridge cycle, calcium ions leave, bind to troponin, reveal the binding sites, cross bridge, disconnection, re energize, and then those move back in. So that's the basics of the uh, of sliding filament theory, step by step broken down.